I'm going to talk about a data set that we have developed on a specific prognostic parameter for this uh, canine tumor. So a prognostic parameter is something a pathologist uh, can determine in order to estimate the patient outcome or the uh, biological behavior of a tumor. And one of those parameters is polyploidy. So this means that a tumor cell contains more than the usual amount of genetic material. And one way we can see those polyploidy in histological sections is by looking at the number of nuclei in a tumor cell. So usually a tumor cell would have a single nuclei, whereas some tumor cells may have two nuclei, which are called binucleated tumor cells, or can have more than two nuclei, and those are called multinucleated tumor cells. And this can happen either by um, failure of the normal cell division, so that the uh, cell is not divided into two daughter cells, or by fusion of two tumor cells. And this increased mat um, genetic material is associated with higher metabolic capacities, and this is um, responsible for, quote unquote, a bad behavior of a tumor. That means, you know, it's, it's often associated with um, metastasis and, and therapy resistance. So our data set is about a relevant uh, tumor of dogs of the skin. And this tumor type is called canine mast cell tumor. And there is a relevant uh, grading system that was developed by Cooper et al. And this, this uh, grading system includes um, different prognostic parameters. One of those is the number of multinuclear tumor cells. And you can see that depending on the number of uh, those multinuclear tumor cells, we pathologists estimate a different um, survival time of the dog. So for the data set, we have used uh, 32 histological images of this tumor. And those images were previously published in a data set that we have developed for um, methodic figures, which is also a relevant prognostic parameter. Um, then an expert, and that was actually me, screened all the entire, um, screened the whole set images and covered the whole tissue and thereby labeled all the B nucleated tumor cells and multinucleated tumor cells. And at a later stage, the same pathologist um, then reassessed the labels in order to verify whether they are correct, whether they need to be removed, or whether there was a switch in the um, label class. As we estimated that the Labels were incomplete, meaning that the pathologist had overlooked some potential candidates. We added a second stage of, of labeling process by means of a algorithmic aided approach. So we developed a model based on the manual data set, and then we screened the images a second time and detected potential candidates with a very high sensitivity. And these candidates were then reassessed by, uh, were assessed by the pathologist in order to um, verify whether they are correct candidates, whether they need to be removed, or whether there was an inappropriate label um, class assignment. So the result of our study was that we obviously generated a data set, and this data set actually includes quite a high number of annotations. So that is almost 20,000 annotations for binucleated tumor cells and almost 1,500 annotations for multinucleated tumor cells. And we have made this data set openly accessible. So everyone who wants to use this data set is free to download this uh, database via this link. And as I said previously, the images are published in a previous publication, but those are also access, can be accessed freely uh, via this link. And then secondly, we also um, determined a benchmark performance or benchmark model for the data set. And therefore we also we used a architecture that we have previously used for detection of mitotic figures. So um, by using this model, we were able to achieve a, a performance of, of one score of above 0.6 for both enucleated tumor cells and multinucleated tumor cells. And then we wondered whether this performance can be improved. And the answer is actually probably yes, because we only use, used uh, one model architecture. And there's, as you know, multiple different architectures that might be uh, performing better on this data set. So everyone who has a, a potentially useful data set, a perfect potentially useful uh, model architecture is free to use this data set as said previously. And then we also wanted to determine how good these F1 scores already are. And this uh, was done by comparison to pathologists. So this table shows the performance of uh, pathologists for 
the nucleated tumor cells, and the following graph will show the performance for multinucleated tumor cells. So we ask six pathologists to um, analyze a subset of the test set and label the B and multinucleated tumor cells. And then testing against the data set ground truth, that was the data set that I generated, we can actually see that the algorithm outperformed all pathologists and actually in some cases had a quite a much higher um, performance. We took different um, ground truth definitions based on the majority of the pathologists. We can see that there's quite a change of the performance matrix, but we can also see that the algorithm is still around the medium value of the pathologists. And we can actually see the very similar thing for multinuclear tumor cells. So also the algorithm outperforms all six pathologists when using the data set ground truth, uh, which was also used for training of the model. And then we looked a little bit more closely on the annotations that were generated by the pathologist. And we can see that actually many structures were only labeled once or a few times by, were only labeled by a few pathologists. So the majority of those cells only has an annotation by one pathologist. Um, and this is true for both binucleated tumor cells and multinucleated tumor cells. And this is not only due to the fact that pathologists obviously do have some kind of visual and cognitive limitations, but also because many of those structures are actually very difficult. And this is, can be seen um, by those images with uh, lower agreement. But overall, of course, path, um, you know, this results question the gold standard um, status of the pathologist as we obviously can see that there's um, quite a lot of discrepancy between pathologists. So I want to focus my discussion on the methods that can be used for data set development. And um, so you all know that data sets are extremely important for training your models and also for testing your models. And today, this first talk that we heard was about methods that can be used um, for increasing the performance of um, algorithms if we only have imperfect data sets. So, our research group actually tried to focus to develop methods that um, tries to improve the data set quality. And we think this is especially important um, for testing data sets because you know, if you want to evaluate the performance of a, of a model, you need ideal quality of the data set. So regardless of the high variability of pathologies, pathologies are the gold standard and they are always important for the data set development. And ideally, they have a very high expertise in that um, field. Um, and traditionally, basically, all the labels are based on the pathologist. But we have developed methods where the pathologist can be supported by algorithms. So and for those approaches, which we call algorithmic augmented, obviously, the um, computer scientist expertise becomes very important. So you guys can become a very important part of developing of data sets. And algorithmic augmented methods can be used either for increasing the quality of data sets, but also for increasing the quantity of data sets, whereas this, the later will not be discussed in this talk as we have not used this for the present data set. So in our present work, we used an algorithm to detect um, missed candidates as an example for the um, algorithmic augmented approach for increasing the quality. And very important is that, you know, there can be a bias introduced by this method that need be, needs to be corrected or addressed appropriately. So when looking at our data sets method, we can see that we have used two approaches, the manual approach and the algorithmic augmented approach. And by adding the second step, there was an increase of the number of annotations by almost double. So there obviously is a very high impact um, on this annotation approach on the training, but also on the testing of our models. So when we look at the first approach, the manual approach, um, there was a pathologist who screened all the images, and then we later used the same pathologist to reassess these um, images. So thereby we try to address the intra-rater variability. Another approach would be to have a different pathologist, and this would address the inter-rater variability. We decided to, to use the, the, the first approach as um, quantification of B and multinuclear tumor cells is actually not that commonly done in practice, just because it's a very time consuming approach. And this is um, you know, just adding another step to the already very time consuming um, diagnostic methods. 
So we expect that the pathologist didn't have that much experience and a rather low consistency while first screening those images, but thereby gaining a lot of experience. And then when later reassessing those images, having a much higher consistency. Regardless of the higher consistency, we did expect that the pathologist overlooked quite a high number of candidates and therefore we added this uh, algorithmic augmentic approach. And our goal was to have a very high sensitivity by the algorithm. So we only used very low detection thresholds um, and generated a very high number of potential candidates. And it should be highlighted that all candidates were reassessed or were assessed by a pathologist. So we did not generate pseudo uh, labels um, it's very important that the quality was ensured by the pathologist and thereby having a very high specificity. And you can actually see by the numbers that only a very few percentage of the candidates were later included in the data set. And this was a step that was done intentionally. So first of all, we wanted to have a high sensitivity and we also wanted to reduce the BS that the algorithm could potentially have on the pathologist. And when you look at the um, number of, of candidates generated by the algorithms detected, uh, just distinguished by the model score, you can actually see that the um, number of annotation candidates uh, increase with lower uh, model scores, but also that the, the number of um, candidates assigned to the data set dramatically decreased. So we decided that at the cutoff of 0.3, the trade off of time investment and, and benefit for the data set quality was not given anymore. So I thank you very much for the intention. And so this talk was intended to show you that data set quality can be improved by the help of, of pattern recognition. So you all play uh, or can play an important role in data set development. Again, this data set is open access. So whoever wants to test your, your models on this can download this via this link. And I also want to acknowledge my scholarship that I've received over the last two years in order to fund my, my research. Thank you very much for your attention.